Hey everybody, for those who don't know me, I am Audrey Byrne from Audrey Lynn Studios on the west side of Canada by Vancouver in a little town called Aldergrove. For those who do know me, sorry about that, you have to hear it again. <laughs> so today I'm going to do another glaze along. I did a glaze along for the Into the Woods mug and I can, um, I'll post a link down below in the description and give you a little picture here. And one of my subscribers asked if I would do um, kind of a winter version of that mug. So I came up with this. It turned out quite nice, it looks wintry. Uh, there's probably some things that I might do a little bit differently next time, but this is our glaze along for today. So, yeah, I hope that you enjoy it and that I explain it easy for you. Uh, down below will be links for the bottle I use, the apron that I wear, yada, 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 buy me a coffee, yada, yada, yada. And uh, yeah, so join me. Okay, so here I have my white salmon slip. White salmon is a Georgie's clay. And um, it's, I blended it, but it is thick right now. So we're going to scoop some out into a bowl. Perhaps you can see, can you see how thick it is? <laughs> Pretty thick. All right, just a little bit for now, because I'm just showing you. Okay. And then we're gonna add some water. Not too, too much now. It's gonna be thicker than pudding. but about pudding like, just a, like a thicker pudding. Yeah, do you see how it sits on the, the spoon? It's not dripping off. All right. And then, we're going to get our applicator bottle. I use these. This is the tip. It's a pack of four. It's, um, I think I got it. I did get it on Amazon, so I'll leave you a link. And I like these particular ones because the, I don't know if you could see that or not, but the hole in here is a bigger. They have another set on there that I've recommended before, but that's more for putting on things like stroke and code or under glazes. When you're doing slip work, you need something just a, with a little bit bigger gauge, I mean, a bigger hole here. Okay, so I'll put a link for those. And to fill this, you take the lid off and give it a squeeze. And then you release your squeeze and the slip goes into the bottle. Okay, like that. But I would like a little bit more, so tap that to get that down there. Give it a little squeeze again, upright. Turn it upside down and release the pressure again. I don't know if you can see that or not. <laughs> and you'll get some in your bottle and you keep doing that until you've got the desired amount in there. All right, so let's just take that extra slip off. And sponge it off so that we have a good seal on our threads there. Okay? And then twist our tip on and we're ready to go. Now I have a blank 
mug here. This one is a little too dry. You want it like leather hard when you do your slip trailing, but this one is a little bit too dry. And that's because I don't have a leather hard one here right now. And I'm going to the lake tomorrow and I wanted to get this bit filmed. <laughs> so I'm just going to do the slip trailing on here and then wipe it off later. All right. So squeeze your bottle and get, get, get your slip moving. I'll show you on here. Can you see the slip moving? Yeah, that's perfect. Doesn't drip. Right? It's stable. Okay, let me wipe that off. Perf. All right, so trees. This is how I do them. It's really just a bunch of squeezing and squiggling. And when I do watercolor, this is basically the technique I use too. And then spray water on and it drips. And I think, I think maybe it could have been a little bit thinner, but I like this. This is good. Okay. You see that? That's your first tree. Your second tree, well, for me anyway, unless you want them all the same height, I would start about here. could be a little bit thinner that's why I'm getting those air bubbles but you see it doesn't actually really matter does it it's not really changing the character of the tree having it spurred out that much okay and the next one would kind of I would probably put it right here this is tall this is shorter I put it right about there So you can, oops, <laughs> oh boy, now I'm, now I'm running out, so, okay, you see that? That's how I applied them onto the mug. So um, then I would take the lid off and grab my, <laughs> okay, upright, give it a squeeze. Turn it upside down into your slip and release the pressure. And you're filling up your bottle that way. All right. Wipe the threads. Put the tip on. I'm just going to grab a blank board for you. Might be a little bit easier to see this way just because there's that different color in the background all right that's there's my tree right if you wanted um a sparser tree you know how you get that look there like sparser looking tree branches or maybe they're facing up don't forget though that especially when you're um, creating a tree where the branches are swinging upwards it's a good idea to bring some depth down in here Yeah, it could be a little bit uh, thinner, but you get the idea, right? Okay, so that's how. I did these trees. Yeah, okay. So let's get to the glaze along part.
Okay, so first things first, I threw this cup on the wheel and pulled the handle with my Kemper <clears throat> handle pull, which I had done a short recently, so you can look that up. This is Plainsman 370 clay, so it's, and I slip trailed the trees on here with the same slip. Okay, so what I'm going to do first is paint the inside of the mug three times. Now normally I would use my Studio White, but I'm not set up yet with all my mugs lined up to do that. So I'm just gonna paint it three times. So let's do the first time together. I'm using Mako's White Opal. And, okay. and then generously just glaze the inside. Now what you don't want is any friction between your brush and the mug. That means there's not enough glaze on there. So make sure <laughs> it's <laughs> spraying everywhere. Make sure that there's no friction. All right. All right. So that's done once. You probably can't see it because it's just white opal. So I'll pause you and do two more coats. Okay, so I've done three coats on the inside of this mug. So my plan is to use white opal in the tree area. And I'm doing that because I've used white opal before. Mako's ice glazes are like celadons. White opal is not an ice glaze, but it's not opaque. So I know that when, when there's a heavier application of white opal, it looks kind of white cloudish, but you still see the clay body underneath where it's not so thick, if that makes sense. So where it settles, it looks whiter. So this is what I'm hoping is going to happen. <laughs> so white opal again, and I'm using the Sumi brush. And basically I'm going to do this. Just very loosely covering the tree area. It's okay if it goes past the tree, like that far. Something like that. You can go. I don't find that it runs very much either, so. Let's go to the next one. Hope you can see well what's going on here. So very loosely paint that tree. Now normally I'd give white opal three coats, but I think I'm gonna try getting away with two here because it's over a textured area. So you don't need to go as thick usually with any glaze over a textured area. Um, it just seems to settle in on the thick side. So anyway, what I'll do is finish this tree and then I'll let you go and come back when I've done all of the trees, two coats. Okay. Okay, so I've done two coats of white opal on all the trees. Now, I'm going to take Amoco River Birch and starting with my Sumi brush, 
I am going to I'm going to go in between all the trees. Like that. Okay. Okay, and then, um, oh, I got some on the handle here. See how I've done that? Make it in between. And then what I'm going to do is switch to my fan brush and go all the way to the top. And we're going to be doing three coats of river birch. Um, this little tree on the handle I did with the white opal twice. So I'm just going to go around it with the river birch. Like that. I think that's about it right there. Have a look. Yeah. All right. So I'm going to do that twice more and then come back. I'm putting the river birch up to the top and um, three times because river birch is a fluxing glaze. So it helps things to move. I don't need anything to really move on the trees. But for my idea, I want there to be movement on all the other places. So, fingers crossed. I'll be back. I changed my plan a little bit. Um, this is the second coat. And what I did is I used Amico's Honey Flux for the second coat. Because if I put three coats of birch on... I'll get a lot of specks and I don't want so many. So I put one coat of honey flux on, um, which is the base of river birch. So my third coat now will be river birch again. And yeah, that's it. Okay. So, and what I'm going to do for that third coat is keep it more at the third mark of the mug because it's a flux it runs so it's nice to have your third coat maybe not all the way down to here where it could run off the pot so let's just uh, put that on and I'm just using my sumi brush again I have a link for that below Okay, so yeah, just the, the top third of the of the mug on your handle as well. All right, so we'll let that dry and then I'll come back. Okay, so now I'm going to use Iron Luster from Amico. And get that lid off and I'm going to put a band of it right about there 
but not all the way to the top. Now I've used, oh, I just wanted to show you that that would hit the top of the tree. So I'm going to avoid the top of the tree. Um, I don't know if you've seen, uh, river birch and iron luster. I have a few pieces. So if you look at some of my kiln openings, I can't recall which one that combination will be there. And, um, Ooh, I love it. I just love it. <laughs> so, and let's put some on the handle right here. Something like that. Okay. That's one coat of iron luster. And I'm going to do three coats. The third coat, I'll just keep shy of the bottom. The third coat will be just in here. Okay, so the second coat will go all the way to where I've created this band. The third coat will be shy of that bottom line. All right, I'll do that and come back. Okay, last step. I have got Amago Indigo Blue here. Truthfully, from what I've seen from other people's posts, I think I would have preferred Arctic Blue. But this is what I have. I don't have Arctic Blue. So Maybe you could all try it and show me. <laughs> what I'm going to do is two bands. I'm going to stay clear of the iron luster and go right to the top with the indigo blue. So I'm hoping that when it's fired, you're going to get the flux underneath is going to make the iron luster move down. Hopefully not too, too far, but oh well, if it does, it does. And make the indigo blue run down a little bit over the iron luster and the rest of it will just remain kind of frosty. I'm also toying with the idea, of course, we have to see how it turns out, but maybe putting um, flex, like with a toothbrush, of luster on just the trees for that little bit of an icy look. Okay, so that's it. I'm gonna put one more coat of indigo blue on that. And then we're just gonna pop her in the kiln and see what happens. <laughs> okay, stay tuned. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed that and that I explained it well enough for you. Uh, by all means, let me know if I didn't. Um, and give it a shot. And by all means, do your own version. And yeah, let me know how you changed it up. Uh, send me a photo. I'm going to leave my email in the description so you can send me a photo and we can yak about it. Uh, for sure, like, subscribe, ringy dingy the bell, leave your comments, all that stuff that all of us creators always ask for, I know. But it uh, pushes our content forward and allows us to create some more. Um, yeah, so thank you very much for joining me. And to all of my subscribers, thank you so much for subscribing. It just 
really means a lot to me and I just enjoy doing these videos. I it just never entered my mind making videos, kiln openings and glaze alongs and make alongs. And once I got started, it was like, hey, I dig this. I like this. <laughs> so, all right, you guys have a good evening, afternoon, wherever you are. Bye for now. Peace out.